Hey, this is Jay Kumar, the Bass Blaster, and this is your Seafoam Top 5 Bait Colors that the pros use. Before getting into it, here's a few disclaimers. Alright, the first one is that the pros fish multiple types of water in multiple conditions at multiple times of year, and they need to find fish fast and catch them efficiently. In other words, it's totally different than most of us fish. All right, the second one is that there are days or lakes or conditions where certain colors just work better, like June bug in Florida, or maybe one of these colors with a different color flake in it. So we're talking day in and day out across the country, all three major bass species. What are the best colors? Here we go. Number one, green pumpkin. Does it look like a literal green pumpkin? Nope. So how did it happen? Well, it was invented by Ed Chambers, the man behind Zoom Soft Plastics, who was a literal bass fishing bait, I don't know, inventor genius. I mean, he really was. The story goes back in the 80s, according to the human bass computer, Kenny Duke, Ed was running some, finishing running some watermelon colored baits. That's a kind of a translucent green. And he was going to run pumpkin after that in the same molds. And he got some crossover. He thought it looked pretty good. He called it green pumpkin and then went and tried it out. The rest is history, man. It took off because it flat out catches them and it sells, outsells that one color, outsells every other color to date, including to pros. Why is that? Well, it catches them, but why is that? I guess it looks a whole lot like most bass food. It can look like uh, baby bluegill or bluegill, full-grown bluegill. Frogs, tadpoles, salamanders, aquatic insects, you name it. All right, variants on the green pumpkin color are basically green pumpkin with any color flake, which is basically what goby is and a bunch of other colors. And now watermelon is kind of a subset of the green pumpkin, green kind of color thing. And of course, red flake or any other kind of flake in that as well. Number two. Yeah, the mighty VH, baby. <laughs> When the water's darker colored or you're flipping the fish, meaning dropping a backlit bait right on their head, black and blue is the deal. But not just then. It catches fish everywhere just like green pumpkin. Probably millions of fish have been caught on green pumpkin baits and the same for black and blue. All right, maybe you could call this darker than green pumpkin and maybe brown would be kind of the same thing. But don't forget, guys like Denny Brower made an entire career out of flipping black and blue jigs and black and blue soft plastics everywhere and in all conditions because it just works. Black and blue. The only color there would be would be black and blue. If you asked 100 true pros, it's going to be simple. It's going to be green pumpkin or it's going to be black and blue. That's it. So just like green pumpkin, black is a common color down there. At times, bait fish and even bass fry can look black. In fact, that's why largemouth and smallmouth bass, etc., are called black bass because their fry are black looking. Did you know that? I did not know that. Weird, wild stuff. There's also salamanders, leeches, snakes, and who knows what else down there that are actually black. So I've always just called the American crayfish. Right now, they are in a very black molting stage. Look at that. Can you believe how blue that crayfish is? Hold on. And we also know that the basses, the largemouth basses, main food source, the Senko, also comes in black. I'm kidding. Come on, lighten up. All right, but remember that bass fishing isn't just about trying to get them to eat. Most of the time we're trying to get them to react. Although with forward facing sonar, that pendulum might be swinging back the other way. To get them to see something they can react to, black can be the deal even on top water. Stuff with like frogs, ploppers, even walking baits. Pros have those for sure, and a few of them keep under wraps top secret black or black and blue crankbaits. Variants on this are black with different color flakes, like red flake for example, different color hues of blue like sapphire or a light blue, and then you have guys who have black and blue jigs and they put a green pumpkin trailer on them so you got all your bases covered. Number three. All right, white, what color is a shad? Well, basically it's a white or a silver white and even herring or other bait fish like that in the country are the same color, white or silver white. 
So if pros want to mimic shad or a similar bait fish, they're going to go to white or some variation of it like chartreuse white, uh, shad, Tennessee shad, green gizzard shad, etc. Since shad is the thing they're trying to mimic, we're obviously talking moving baits here. Things like crank baits, jerk baits, swim jigs, spinner baits, that kind of thing. And they're using those variations on white depending on what kind of bait it is, like bone on top, chartreuse and white for a spinner bait, a shad color of some type on a crankbait. So not much more to say about that other than white equals shad. Number four. Okay, this is one color variation of shad we have to mention because it took off like crazy and now it's all over the place. We're talking about sexy shad, AKA foxy shad, foxy mama, SX shad. There's all kinds of variations on the name, but it's that distinctive shad color with the yellow stripe down the side. You know what I'm talking about. And as far as on a national level, I believe it was Strike King who came out with it first. I'm not saying that somebody didn't have something similar before that, but on a national scale, Strike King was definitely the first. And now it's on all kinds of things like jerk baits, spinner baits, swim baits, frogs, you name it. Why did it catch on so big? Well, two reasons. One is it catches them. And two is Kevin Van Dam, also known as KVD, AKA cybernetic organism, living tissue over metal endoskeleton. All right, the story goes that in the mid 2000s, Kevin took a box of cull colors, reject colors, home from uh, Strike King. And then he went out and I guess practiced with them or fished some tournaments with them. And he ended up winning a couple tournaments within about a year, Bassmaster Elite tournaments, on this new color which came to be called Sexy Shad. Well, for sure, Kevin's a one-man marketing machine based on his success alone, but a lot of people caught him on that color. In fact, TK Stanley of Tacklecraft, who is an amazing custom baits paint and a painter, told me this story. He said, my buddy called and said, you bought one of these sexy shads yet? And I said, no, and he said, you need to. It went in one ear and out the other. Finally, six months later, I bought a Series 5, that's a Strike King Series 5 crankbait, and threw it and they bit it like they'd never seen it before. I was like, man, there's something to this. Yes, there is. Sexy Shad is sexy to bass. Number five, red in the spring. Rayburn Red, how did that whole deal get started? Well, it did start down at Sam Rayburn Reservoir in Texas and it started with a rattle trap this color. Now that color is actually Red Shad, but it got the nickname Rayburn Red. And when most of us think of Rayburn Red now or Red in the Spring, it's often a lot redder or red orange, a brighter orange red color than that. Frequently it has gold incorporated in it too. Like this rattle trap color called Rayburn Red Craw. By the way, Wes Higgins, who until recently ran Bill Lewis Lures and is the grandson of Bill Lewis, Bill Lewis Lures produces the rattle trap, he said gold is the other red in spring. Well, we're here talking about red because red isn't just for Texas or Sam Rayburn Reservoir in the spring. Now, a lot of people think it's a crayfish deal. It's meant to mimic red crayfish that time of year, and for sure that's true. But there are red crayfish or crayfish with red parts of them or pieces of them all year round in different parts of the country. So red works everywhere and can work anywhere during certain conditions, certain times of the year, certain water temperatures, that kind of thing, like muddier water, colder water. And I'll tell you one reservoir right by me, the, the deal is on the riprap, red uh, can catch them all year round, but nowhere else. So just like Sexy Shad, Red took off and is available in pretty much every style of bait you can imagine now. Chatter baits, jigs, spinner baits, of course soft plastics, and even frogs. So you bet there's tons of colors that catch bass like chrome blueback, gold blackback, chartreuse blackback, chartreuse powder blueback, citrus shad, bluegill, Alabama craw, purple black, purple brown, PB and J, June bug, red bug, red shad, and last but not least morning dawn or some shade of pink. But again, we're talking pros who travel all around the country and have limited time to figure out how to get bass bite and put them in the boat as efficiently as they can. Even though they own and carry like 10,000 times more baits than we ever will, they still use these colors tournament after tournament, year after year. 
So, do we need all the colors that we have and still want more? Hmm. Heck yeah we do, peeps. We're bass fishermen. That's all I got for you this week. Thank you, Seafoam. Go to BassBlaster.com or .rocks to sign up for the awesome Bass Blaster email. Get the juice. See you next week. God bless you.